Hi everyone, this is Studio Slave on behalf of ADSR and in this video we're going to have a look at all of the new features on the brand new Echo device in Ableton Live 10. Echo is a modulation delay which is capable of replicating a whole different host of sounds and hardware units from space echoes and analog tapes right the way through to clean digital delays. And as well as that it's also got a host of different modulation and character options. So I'll just show you how it sounds now. So that's me using it in a send and return configuration. What I'm going to do now is just loop up the arrangement that doesn't have that automation on it, mute the bass, and I'm just going to demonstrate the echo device using our percussion bus here, which is essentially everything apart from the kick and the bass. So there's plenty of sounds for you to get used to there, which we're going to modulate and we're going to mess around using the echo and delay. I'm also going to put a limiter just after the echo because things can get a little bit crazy when we ramp up the feedback as you'll see shortly. Generally speaking, most time-based effects are used in a send return configuration with the dry wet set to 100, but in this case I'm going to use it as an insert effect just so I can show you exactly how it works using this single track. So the first control is the dry wet which I'm going to set to 50% and you can see we get this graphic display which we can see is going to visually show us exactly what's happening with our echoes. So we can change the echo time simply by dragging up and down. It actually took me quite a while to understand how to look at this visual display. So it isn't a 2D display, think of it as a 3D display where you're looking down a tunnel and you'll start to understand as you play with the echo times and the feedback exactly how it's getting interpreted by this visual display and then you can understand how you can read it as well. As well as the visual display we can change our echo times using the two knobs and then we can use the drop downs to change between notes, triplets, dotted and then sixteenths as well and now what we can do is we can unlink the left and right channel and if we set the right channel to sixteenths as well then we can have three sixteenths on the left and then six sixteenths on the right and we can see that in the visual display and then finally we also have the feedback here we'll see the feedback going further into the tunnel and we can push this right the way up So because we've got the exact same settings on both channels, at the moment our echo is actually mono. So we can here we can push the stereo all the way up and it just spreads it but it's not actually making it stereo. And we can put it right the way down to 0% for mono. But if we shift the percentages off to the left and right, you can hear it gives us instant stereo imaging and we can see that in the visual display as well. If we click the yellow sync buttons, we can change this from a sync to delay into a timed delay in milliseconds. And this is by far my favourite use for this Echo device, especially when they're unlinked from either the left or the right channel, so we can get some real crazy effects, especially when we incorporate the feedback as well. We get some real metallic and fed back sounds. We can really get it to sing and ring out. We also have the input and output controls and this acts like an analogue style echo or delay unit so if you push the input hard it's going to drive it and distort. So to show you that I'll set the echo device to 100% wet. And you can start to hear that crunch. And then we can compensate with the output dial. So this is obviously affecting the wet signal and we can actually also do this to the dry signal as well using the D button to distort the input which is completely dry so if you have a listen that's now also rooting the signal through the device so we'll distort it a little bit we'll go back to 50% we'll ramp up the feedback and then what we also have is we have this invert button here and this inverts the polarity of the fed back signal so my favourite use for this is for getting interesting tones when we've got real tight delays like we have here push the feedback right up and you can hear we can instantly change the tone of our feedback and if we use this in combination with this next part which is our filter down here so we can turn it off and on we've got a high 
and a low pass. And each one of these has a resonance. But what we can also do is we can pop this open. So now we can really get interesting. So we've got quite a high feedback. We've got distortion on. And as you can probably hear, we could actually use this as a resonator if we wanted to as well. So we get two devices for the price of one there. Thank you very much, Ableton. those effects and you might notice that every time I push this button we get this sort of squelchy sound so now that I've shown you the basics of this actual echo what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you if you go to character you can turn off free pitch and now it won't do that personally I really like it but if you find yourself automating these functions it can get a bit annoying if you get a lot of this stuff going on quite a lot so if you do want to get rid of it, then there's your button. So next we're going to explore the modulation options. So to get to the modulation section, all we have to do is use the tab across the top and that will take us to the LFO. And we can move this LFO around by using the display just by dragging. You can see the rate change, or we could also take sync off. So the two colours defines the left and the right channel so we can have them in phase or out of phase and we also have a range of different LFO shapes to choose from as well across the bottom. So this LFO can be used to modulate either the delay time or the filter. So we've got the delay up here, these two knobs, and then the filter is on at the echo tab so it's going to be modulating that up and down in time with the LFO. Nice and slow. So you can hear this is a little bit carnage on this setting, so you usually wouldn't have the modulation at 100%. We've got both of the left and right in phase, so we've got this going on. And if we take them out of phase, we're going to get more of a stereo image as they move independently of one another. So mono, stereo. We can also times this frequency by four. And then we can also modulate the filter as well in the same way. So we'll go for we'll go for a ramp this time. So to demonstrate this, let's slow down this LFO. See we've got a nice slow ramp. Then we're gonna push up the modulation. So now we've got the filter modulating at a very slow rate. Make it a bit more obvious, we'll go a bit faster. And then what we can also do is we can push up this envelope mix and this is essentially pushing it from a LFO to an envelope follower. So 100% it is no longer the LFO which is modulating the filter cutoff. Let's get this a bit more interesting so you can hear what's going on. Modulating the delay time is a little bit more obvious, so what I'll do is I'll modulate the delay time with the LFO and then I'll change that to the envelope. So things can get real crazy real quick. So the final tab I want to show you is the character tab and that's what makes this Echo device quite a diverse plugin because it allows us to add things like noise so we can get a whole different range of sounds from old school Echo devices and 
Other things we can also do is things like side chaining, so we can duck our echo out of the way, or we can add a little bit of flanging or wobbling, which emulates the delay in tape machines, and then we also have a gate as well. So we'll have a look at these four different effects now. So we've got the gate, and this is only going to let the signal through as we'd expect, like a gate. So you can hear it work in there. You take the release real tight. We can open it right up. So it's going to let all the signal through. And the lower we go, the more of the echo it's going to catch. We have ducking. So like a sidechain compressor, this is going to duck the echo out the way of the original signal. To really get what this is doing, I'll show you. So this is our signal without ducking. And as I increase the ducking, you can hear how it's getting pushed out the way by the original. We then have noise, and for noise to work, we don't actually need sound, so I'll just turn this on, and this is going to get affected by the filter first, so what we'll do is we'll turn the filter off, just show you the sound of the noise. So we've got the amount, and then we've got the morph, which goes through a range of different noises, and these sound absolutely beautiful, so I'll just show you them. Got some hum. And then we can dial back the amount, something a bit more sensible maybe. And then we can turn our filter on. And then what we could also do is play this song again. And then we also have some wobble. So what this wobble is, is it's the intricacies of things like tape delays and things like that. They make these weird sounds. So once again, just like the noise, we have the amount setting. And then we have the morph setting. So it's different types of wobble. So I'll go to an extreme value to show you. Realistically, you'd only use that at real low percentages, maybe something like that, just to add a little bit of an analog flavour. And as you know, we've got the re-pitch button, which gives us the sound. So moving over here, we've already gone through the stereo. What we've then got is we have a reverb, and this is just a one knob reverb unit, so we push it up, we get instant reverb, we can control the decay here, and this is just of the reverb, so here we're washing that out there. Tighten the decay right up again. And we can set that post echo, so it's going to process the echoes, pre echo, or feedback. And feedback can get quite dangerous, but I'll show you it. So, what we can do now is go back to where we were. feeding back into the filter now. So 
If you are going to do that, I'd use a limiter or proceed with caution. And then we've already gone through the output and the dry wet. So the last few things to go through, I'll turn that off, are our controls here. So we've got stereo, which is what we're used to, then got ping pong, and if I just change this, so just to show you, if we look at these dots, we've got ping pong, which is left, right, left, right, left, right. Stereo is just standard stereo. And if we go to mid side, then you can see we've got the mid section here and we have the side section on the left and right. And our buttons now say mid and side. So just to demonstrate this. So there we've explained every single feature of the brand new Echo device in Ableton Live 10. As you can tell, it's quite a diverse plugin and it's capable of not only emulating a whole load of analog and digital echoes and delays, but as well as that we can also use it for sound mangling, modulation, as a noise generator or even just as a resonator. So this is a real good plugin to dive in with and as you can probably tell from this video, you've got to really experiment and dive deep with this and essentially just record what you're doing and then you can go back in afterwards and find parts you like and then you can have a look at the automation settings if you want to recreate that in your project. So that's the way moving forward that I'd say is the best way of using this Echo device and making sure that you capture all of those happy mistakes. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video when we cover the drum bus.